Hi, my name's Cy Horton and I'm an Applications Engineer for our 3D Doc team here at Faro UK. During this tutorial I'd like to run you through Faro Scene LT and look at some of the benefits and limitations that the software has and also discuss some of the workflows. If we look at some of the benefits of using LT, firstly it's a free viewer for viewing point cloud, be it from Faro Scene or from any other system where we support that particular file extension. You can install as many licenses as required within the office. The licensing is a simple license request where you click one button and we'll go through that. I can also show you some of the basic workflow support and where Scene LT might fit into your current workflows. In using Scene LT, it will actually help you to release your full scene license for doing more complex registrations. So there's a benefit of using the system there. It also allows full navigation and measurement capabilities for people that just want to view and take simple dimensions. And we can also export the point cloud to CAD, again thus freeing up your scene license. Firstly, you need to know where to download the software from. So if you go to the faro.com website, under products, under faro software and under scene, you will see the scene LT license is here ready for you to download. If, as we'll discuss later, you're also exporting data to CAD on a specific machine, and you need to bring that data via recap, you would also need to download the relevant SDK for the machine you're working on. Once you've successfully installed the software, there's a couple of things we need to set up. As with every version of Scene, when we go from a sub-decimal release, say from 5.4 to 5.5, you'll need to relicense the software. Also, when you install any Scene license or Scene LT license on a new machine, you'll get a 30-day grace period to use the software. But what you can do straight away within Scene LT, because it is a free piece of software, if you go to the Help menu and go to Licensing, under Licensing here, there's an option called Send. If you press the Send button, that will send the license code for this particular piece of software on this machine to Scene-Licensing, and very quickly you'll receive a code back on email. If you simply copy and paste that code into this dialog box and click Add, it will then license the license of Scene LT on this machine and you're ready to use it. A couple of other things to note. We can also do some basic identification of targets in here. So again, I'll come back to that very shortly, but a little bit like when you first set Scene up. If you go to the Options menu and go to Matching and go to Match Sphere Settings, if you're using a range of different sphere settings for target-based registration, you can add those into here, which means the algorithms in the software will automatically check that we've got the correct sphere size before we proceed. Also, under the folder option, you can point your location here at the same location as your full version of Faro Scene. So you're looking at the same projects as all your colleagues are looking at. And pretty much the rest of the options are the same. So for me, there are several workflows of where Scene LT becomes a benefit. The first is if you're working with a target-based registration, i.e. using spheres and targets. What we can do is use Scene LT as a medium for somebody to go and identify all those targets first before we do the registration. One of the first limitations of Scene LT is that we can't actually perform a registration. You need the full version of Scene in order to do that but it doesn't mean we can't do the preparation work in Scene LT. This might be done by a junior member of staff, for instance. So they could come in and create a new project, and I'm just gonna call this LT and click Create. I could then go to my scans, pick up the scans, drag them into my new project, as we would do in the full scene version, and click Save. And for anybody that's watched any of the other tutorials, the comments box and the author box is quite important because it shows at what point you've done what operation to the scans and click OK. This will then go through and import the scans and it will filter them exactly the same thing as you do in scene. But if you've got two, three, four, five hundred scans or more, if you're doing that in the full license of scene, it can sometimes tie up the license of scene when you might need to do other operations or you want to put this on a machine where you don't necessarily use it for a high degree of work. This will allow you to just to bring in the scans and save them. Once that's finished, you'll see that our scans are loaded in our project. And the first thing you'll spot is when we go to right click on any scan and go to operations, we've got a very limited number of options. Under registration, we can simply level with one click or level with three clicks. 
Also, we can't apply colour. What you'll also notice is we can't create things like a scan point cloud. But what we can do is view those scans in a planar view. So if I just open it in the normal way, just by right clicking and opening the planar view, in here you'll see exactly the same navigation tools as you would see in full scene. And you'll also notice that we've got the same tools up here. So again, if you've got lots of scans where you like to select your targets manually rather than using pre-process, which again, just to highlight, if we go to operations, pre-processing doesn't exist as an option. What we could do is go through and manually select all the spheres in this location, same as we'd normally do. Again, all the tools are the same, so all I'm going to do is move around and identify the spheres. So all I've quickly done is gone through and identified all of the targets in each one of these scans. Again, by working in this way, some customers prefer to because they know they get the right sphere the first time, but they can also start to choose which spheres they want to pick between the scan locations. When we've done that, I'm just going to save to put in a note to make sure the next person on the next machine or the same person on the same machine knows exactly what you've done to those scans. So when we're in here, I'm just going to unload that scan and I'm actually going to drop into full scene now and I'm going to quickly register that scan and then come back into scene LT. Now that the job has been taken into the full version of Faro scene, you'll notice that a scan manager has appeared. So the first thing I'm going to do based on this workflow example is to go to the project history and look what's actually been done. So you can see I identified the targets, then in full scene they've gone in and registered that based on a target based registration. They've also applied the colour and they've created a scan point cloud. So we're now back in scene LT. So that's one workflow where you can start to free up your scene license just by identifying targets. The second workflow is if you're working in CAD you could have scene LT open on a left hand screen and your CAD open on the right hand screen and then in here you're free to view the point cloud in 3D or in the planar view and take any measurements you want in exactly the same way as you would in scene. So if we want a measurement from the ceiling here I can start to put the measurements in wherever I want to and you can see here's the measurement if I just double click to turn off the overall and the horizontal because all I'm really interested in is the vertical i.e. the yellow line is the hypotenuse because that's the difference between where I clicked on the ceiling and where I clicked on the floor scene LT has then corrected the horizontal to give me the vertical of 2.6958 so again I can take as many measurements as I want in here also this could be beneficial to your clients especially if you're working with consultants or other people because you could send them the scene project file get them to install scene LT and they can do exactly the same thing alternatively what you could do if I were to right click and go import export and export scan points I could choose FLS files and I could export these scans as FLS files in their registered state so again the person receiving these could start a new project in scene LT drag and drop those scans into the project press save and they would view them in the registered state which is also another way of cutting down on the file size because you're only sending them the scans you're not sending them everything else within the project file so that's a couple of options there the next option and especially maybe you're working with recap and we revit you'll hopefully seen that we now have the ability to export as a project now in here when we're exporting as a project we can export the ls proj file or we can export the rcp file now if you're working on a large job exporting the RCP file can again take some time and whilst that's exporting it's using up your license of scene it might also be on a computer where you need to do other work you need to do CAD work and your processors or your RAM are being hit by the export so you could have a machine in the corner of the office on a network you could open up this particular project and export the recap project you could do that during the day or during out of hours so it gives you another benefit of using scene LT also in here you'll notice that we can also export every other formation that we can in scene LT so it can be used as a workhorse just for doing exports and passing data backwards and forwards between other systems maybe another benefit is combining projects if you've had several team members working on several floors of the same building and they've all been brought together what you could do is also import and import any project that you want so in here all I'm going to do is import a freestyle scan So click OK and now all of a sudden I've got a freestyle scan in my view the next option could be to use scene LT to process any movies you want to create using the app. So if I go to tools and go to apps, here I've got the free video app which you can download and use. But remember it has a watermark of Faro and scene flying over the top, but it's good to use for practice 
before you then potentially move forward and purchase the Video Pro app. So if I activate it, it appeared on my start bar. I'm just going to close this free star scan and get rid of it because I don't need it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at this view in 3D, look at my building, and then all I'm going to do is exactly the same as I've shown you in the Video Pro tutorials. Click and create a new viewpoint, rotate, click and create another one, and rotate, and so on and so forth, just to give us our camera path. So we'll just do three for now. Here I've got the icon for create new video path. Click on it, select my camera path, add them as viewpoint, select my rotation method, click save, click save, click next, and I've then got the video to set up. Again, depending on what you're doing, if you're creating a very long video, it can take several hours worth of processing. And when you're processing a video, I always prefer to not have any other application running in the background, which means it ties up my machine. But again, I could have a machine in the corner that I use for processing videos that doesn't have anything else running on it. So lastly, one of the other features that was introduced in the latest patch update is the ability to publish WebShare Cloud data. If I click on the icon, you'll notice we've got exactly the same dialog box as we have in Scene. Now the one thing you will realize when you're using Scene, if you're creating a WebShare Cloud, firstly, on a large project can take time to create the WebShare itself, but also your upload could take anything from half an hour to several hours, A, depending on the size of the project, and B, depending on the bandwidth. One of the key benefits of CNLT now is that you can create your web share and you can upload your web share in CNLT. So again, that can be on a dumb terminal in the corner of the office that is churning and uploading the data either during the working day or out of hours. But again, you've freed up your scene license or you can carry on doing CAD work or doing more complex registrations or whatever you need to do in scene. So again, all you do is follow through the process, click the upload button, upload your settings and you're away. So I think that covers most of the key features of Faro Scene LT. As you'll notice, not all the operations appear. You've got limited icons, but you can still view, manipulate, rotate, take measurements, and do most of the things you might need to do in an environment where the software is free to use. So hopefully that covers all the key benefits. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use, and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming movies. These will all be published on my YouTube channel, so please feel free to subscribe. I will also send out notifications via my Twitter account or on LinkedIn or on the laser scanning forum. If you're struggling with any aspects of scene, I would encourage you to use the knowledge base at faro.com. All these tutorials are linked to key cases on the knowledge base, plus a lot more tips and tricks. Thank you.